Hey guys, a few days ago we've unboxed the new RX 6800 XT from AMD and if you're interested but you haven't seen it yet, we'll leave the link in the description below. Now it's time to dig deeper into the features and performance. Are we finally at the point where we can have an all AMD system without any compromises? Well, we're gonna find out. And if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. So what are the new features for this big Navi card? Through the architectural improvements, AMD claims to have achieved 54% improvement per watt over the last generation and is now able to compete with Nvidia. While they've kept the seven nanometer manufacturing process, they've doubled the die size and now have more than double the transistors. With this improvement, they were able to put 72 compute units as well as 72 ray accelerators in the latest generation RX 6800 XT. They've also improved GPU frequencies with up to 30% improvement. We're now seeing these cards sometimes hitting 2400 megahertz speeds. With increased CU counts and clock speeds, there's a need to improve memory bandwidth to feed this GPU monster. All of this already increases power consumption, so they had to innovate when it comes to memory. AMD has integrated new cache design into Infinity Fabric and called it Infinity Cache. This is the first of its kind and it works slightly differently from a typical cache on a CPU. In servers, the cache is broken down into banks and these are normally set up in serial. But with RDNA 2, Infinity Cache is placed in parallel to increase bandwidth. With peak bandwidth hitting almost two terabytes per second, making it four times the speed of a 256-bit GDDR6 interface while keeping it much more power efficient. Infinity Cache sits as part of Infinity Fabric and is dynamically clocked. When there is high load, it will clock up and provide more memory to the GPU engine. And when the process is engine bound, Infinity Fabric will clock down to save power. With this in mind, we should see much more use of it in 4K gaming and it will likely clock down while in 1080p, as it will normally be more engine or CPU bound. Another interesting part is the latency. Even though there is a larger die, which in turn increases latency, with introduction of Infinity Cache, AMD claims that there is an average of 34% reduction in latency compared to the RX 5700 XT, which has improved performance at lower power levels. With all of these implementations, AMD says Big Navi has 20% improvement per clock per compute unit, almost double the compute units, and also increased clock frequency by about 30%. To ensure RX 6800 XT hits the 300 watt power limit, AMD had to optimize power consumption to make it 30% less energy demanding per cycle. Another large development is Smart Access Memory, SAM for short. This allows CPU to have direct access to all VRAM on the GPU, thus improving performance. Its function currently only available between the new Zen 3 CPUs and RDNA 2 graphics cards, but it seems like it will be available on most brands in the future. This is a whole lot of tweaks, but how does it stack up against other cards out there? Let's find out. We used our new AMD test bench with Ryzen 9 5950X. Here we tested the older RTX 2080 Super, new RTX 3070 and RTX 3090. We're keeping all of these cards at stock and for the new AMD card, we have a separate benchmark where we've enabled smart access memory. This will be indicated on the graphs. Unfortunately, we're not able to retest RTX 3080 just yet. So we're including the few game results from our previous test while running an Intel i7-10700K test bench. Please note, due to this change, results are not directly comparable, especially at 1080p, so we will not focus on them too much. Starting with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, at 1080p we see all the cards evenly spaced out, with RX 6800 XT only about 10% behind the RTX 3090, who is taking the lead here. Enabling SAM improves Radiance performance by about 5%. In 1440p, the gap between RX 6800 XT and RTX 3090 widens to 16%, and enabling SAM provides just 4% improvement. What is interesting, at this resolution, RTX 3080 performance is much higher as it is no longer limited by the CPU. In 4K, we see similar gap between AMD and NVIDIA cards, while enabling SAM provides us a moderate 2% improvement. It is still free performance, so we can't really complain here. In Horizon Zero Dawn, at 1080p, we see very similar average FPS scores on all three high-end cards, with only difference in 1 percentiles. Moving to 1440p, we have RX 6800 XT only about 8% behind RTX 3090. Considering this card is less than half the price, not bad at all. Setting resolution to 4K, the gap between RTX 3090 and other cards increased to about 17%. 
and RTX 3080 has caught up. It does have low one percentiles when compared to RX 6800 XT, and this is actually where the AMD card has the winning feature, 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Horizon Zero Dawn at 4K maxed out settings needs more than 12 gigabytes of VRAM, and RTX 3080 only has 10. Next, we have CSGO, and at 1080p, the RTX cards perform about 10% better on one percentiles, but at 200 FPS mark, I feel it doesn't really matter. Bumping up the settings all the way to 4K, we see RTX 3090 is still the best performer, but it is nice to see RX 6800 XD is matching it at least on average FPS. So far, results are very varied, but there is no doubt that RX 6800 XD is competitive and with SAM enabled, it appears to be performing really well. Next, I want to check out its performance in more synthetic scenarios, so we ran a few 3D Mark benchmarks. Starting with DX11 test, Firestrike, which is running at 1080p, we see RX 6800 XT actually beating the RTX 3090 and surprisingly, enabling SAM actually made the score lower. When we go up to Firestrike Ultra, which is a 4K test, the gap between AMD and Nvidia cards shrinks, but AMD is still on top. In this one, enabling SAM does not make much of a difference. Moving to DirectX 12 test, Time Spy, which is running at 1440p, the tables have turned and RX 6800 XT gives it lead back to RTX 3090. Going up to Time Spy Extreme, which is a 4K test, we see the same story with no changes after enabling SAM. Lastly, we have Ray Tracing test, Port Royal, and here RTX 3090 just blows RX 6800 XT out of the water. The difference here is almost 50%. Since we're on the topic of ray tracing, for our test, AMD has provided a range of games to try out, and two of them had built-in benchmarks. Please note that both these setups are still in beta, so performance may not be very representative of the finished product. It does, however, represent relative performance to other cards right now. First, we have Dirt 5, with ray tracing options turned on. In 1080p, we have RX 6800 XD beating out the RTX 3090 by about 25% while SAM is enabled. When we bump the resolution up to 1440p, we see RTX 3090 getting closer, but it's still lagging behind. Turning the settings all the way up to 4K, the gap shrinks to just 6%. While all the settings were exactly the same, the game supports variable rate shading, which allows certain scenes to be rendered at lower rate to reduce required processing power. This way, things like corner frames or distant objects may be rendered at lower quality, while elements that are in the middle of user's focus area will be rendered at full quality, resulting in optimum performance and higher frame rates without noticeable visual differences. Next game is Rift Breaker, and here I'm very impressed with the ray tracing effects for both lighting and shadows, as well as overall performance. At 1080p, we have RTX 3090 in the lead by about 20%, but if you look at the frame rates, these are still around 200 FPS, which is absolutely awesome. In 1440p, the gap actually increases to 35%. And what is interesting here, RTX 3070 and in fact RTX 2080 Super are also not that far behind. Moving to 4K, we see RTX 3090 once again ahead by a long margin, and its CPU is still at max usage. It is very unusual to see CPU being leveraged in a GPU intensive application. There is clearly still some optimization to be done before this game goes live. That's a lot of gaming and synthetic tests, but raw performance paired with the 16 gigabytes of VRAM should also be good in productivity tasks, right? Well, kind of. In Blender, while doing the shorter BMW test, this card is actually performing worse than RTX 3070, but in the longer classroom test, it slots in nicely between RTX 3090 and 3070. This is where the fast cache is going to come in very handy. We also ran Blackmagic Resolve benchmark from Puget Systems and found RX 6800 XD actually pulling its weight rather well, scoring way above RTX 3070, as we would expect, and landing about 10% behind from RTX 3090 while SAM is enabled. Considering its price and 16GB of VRAM, this card may actually be very good for video editing. We'll have to do some more in-depth testing in the future. With the rate performance numbers out of the way, let me cover a few other important parameters, starting with thermals. A quick note, our ambient studio temperature is 26.5 degrees Celsius. While testing in gaming, RX 6800 would stay in the low to mid 70s while under heavy load. While testing in Blender, it hit around 70 degrees and stayed there, and it seems enabling SAM does not provide any notable impact on thermals. This leads us really well to noise levels, and I'm completely blown away here. 
The card is incredibly quiet. In fact, while doing benchmarks, I have not even noticed it. Only when we had to do the testing for noise performance, I noticed some sound. To be honest, the testing was done on an open bench, so you got much more fresh air and needed less cooling. At idle, this graphics card actually turns off, as you can see right here, and it is completely silent. To test it further, we had to turn on Fermark, set it to 4K and leave it for about 10 minutes to warm up. After that, we had the light hum at 42 dBA, with fan speed only ever reaching 45%. For those who are interested in the maximum noise that this card can generate, we've set the fan speed to 100% and at peak it hit 58 dBA. This is loud, but unlikely it will ever reach this in the normal conditions. AMD has achieved its performance by including three redesigned fans and a full board length thin array, as well as using graphite thermal interface for optimum heat transfer to the vapor chamber and results, well, they speak for themselves. There are many other features and options I would love to talk about, such as support for DirectX 12 Ultimate, Radeon Fidelity FX, and overclocking options, but that will have to be in another video. To sum things up and clarify if we're finally at the point where we can have an all AMD system with no compromises. And the short answer is no, and I don't think we'll ever be. It is very difficult to make something that is good for everyone. There will always be trade-offs, but damn, they have made a great piece of kit and will certainly compete with NVIDIA. All are hope that they will keep up with support and work with developers to optimize game and productivity performance. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up and subscribe for more. I will see you guys in the next one.